Good morning, everyone. Um, a big thank you for checking out our talk today. My name is Sylvie, and Henny and I are actually talking to you from London. So I hope you can understand uh, our foreign accents. Um, we're actually right in the middle of the city of London, which is the financial district, financial district of London. So, um, and Alan is actually talking to the So good luck, everybody. So we are spread out geographically, but actually that's appropriate because it sets the scene for how our project has been run. But more on that later. What we want to do today is tell you a story, our project story. A story about how we managed to help and support our client despite quite a few obstacles. A story of a client with many gaps in their tool set who employed BBD to help bridge those gaps. At the end of our talk, we want to demonstrate that despite the various challenges we encountered, that we as a project team, and actually BBD as a community, we were able to resolve those challenges, improve the solution for the client, and use those challenges as opportunities for learning. So our client needed help. Well, nothing new there. If it was easy, they wouldn't come to BBD. So a little bit of background. This is a financial services client who had many strategic objectives when they approached us first. But the main one was they wanted a scalable system that would allow them to double or even triple uh, the, uh, their existing products but with no impact on operating costs. But they were struggling with the roadmap, with the tools, with the knowledge and the budget to make it happen. And the gap between where they were and where they wanted to be was huge because they had been focused on their core business for a very, very long time. In fact, they had been struggling on filling the gaps in their systems and processes with spreadsheets and manual processes so actually increasing their operating costs, but not increasing sales. And their systems had not been modernized in over 20 years. So lots of room for improvement there. They also had minimal experience of project work, either running a project or being part of a project. So BAU was really all they knew. So we got involved and they put their trust in us. How we helped them, the issues we encountered, and where we found the answers to achieve ultimately a positive outcome, that is our story. So it'd be really easy to stand here and describe to you all that we've achieved, examples of all our successes, and talk to you about our very happy client. But we want to tell you about the journey and how we managed to build success from small failures. We want to tell you about the highly experienced and high performing project team, some in the room here, who still experience difficulties and challenges, both on the tech and the people side. Our story is very much how we were able to leverage our accelerators and frameworks when we came up against problems and how we were able to reach out to that, that community and the extensive knowledge base across BBD as a whole, because that is what is useful, knowing where you can find solutions to your problems. If we can learn from each other, then any challenges faced form part of those teachable moments that make you bond and grow as a wider team. And if we can improve that adaptive thinking or that ability to recognize an unexpected situation, quickly review the various possible outcomes and then decide on the best way forward, well, that en enables us to speed up delivery for our clients. We should be leveraging what project teams have learned and built in the past in order to make us be able to do more, better and faster. The project journey is actually the BBD story. Reaching the destination is actually the client story. So I'm gonna hand over to Alana now, and she's gonna to talk to you about the project in more deta detail and in more depth. She's gonna talk about the added complexities 
that come from projects with distributed teams that have a mix of different cultures, languages, locations, and nationalities. Henny will then take you through the solution and the tools and the internal knowledge that we relied on. And he will describe that journey to the solution that has been successfully delivered so far. As BBD continues to move towards business on the international stage, these types of multicultural pro projects will continue to be the norm. And the skills and experience needed to manage the client, as well as get the best out of our internal teams on these type of projects, that will be key. So let's begin our story. Over to you, Alana. Thank you very much, Sylvie. And good morning to you and Hedy and everybody joining with you from London. And good afternoon to everybody joining from the Netherlands, Portugal, India, and last but not least, everybody here with me joining from South Africa. If I had to greet every BBD employee in their mother tongue, it would be quite a list. And I'll probably receive some criticism for my pronunciation. So what you can see on the screen is the foreshore freeway bridge that can be found in the city of Cape Town. You can also see that it was never completed and that quite a bit of bridge was built that leads up to the abrupt end. Seven years of construction when the plug was pulled due to budget constraints. So I'm sure you would think, how can this happen and how much money was wasted? But sadly, this is not an uncommon occurrence. But guess what? Us in the software development industry are lucky. We have agile. But unfortunately, that also doesn't mean it doesn't happen in our industry. You don't find super troopers like BBD around every corner. Before I share our project journey, I'd like to share a few interesting facts about the team. We are one team. I'm sure all of you know that teamwork makes the dream work. Most of us, however, have more experience working together in one office with our colleagues, grabbing a coffee to solve a, or to discuss a problem, rolling your chair over to your neighbor to assist with something, or maybe even shouting across the office at a colleague who committed code that broke the build. And of course, those late night releases where a new bug is picked up and one person controls the keyboard with the rest of the team watching over his shoulder combining their intelligence to figure it out. None of these things are possible with colleagues in different countries. Working as one team is important and certainly has new exciting challenges as we continue our endeavor to expand BBD's footprint globally. This team consists of 24 people that's employed by two companies. The client fills the roles of project sponsor, product owner, business analyst, various subject matter experts, and also contribute software engineers to the core development team. BBD fills the roles of project manager, tech lead, and of course, software engineers of various levels of experience. So while we have reporting responsibilities to the client on project progress, um, some of the client employees also have reporting responsibilities to the BBD tech lead. This adds complexity and requires careful navigation. Three generations make up the team, with the most belonging to Gen X, then Millennials, and then Gen Zs. In my opinion, it's hard beneficial to have input from each of these generations. Um, embracing this diversity and really getting to know your people paves the way to success. Four, the team can be found across four time zones with four and a half hours of overlap during normal working hours of each of these time zones. Have a look at our standing scrum ceremonies. As you can see, the UK has stand up at 9.30 during standard time. Um, the Netherlands, Portugal and South Africa at 10.30 and India at two in the afternoon. Daylight savings time is also at play which means that half of the year a standing time, um, meeting has, a, has one time slot, and the other half of the year, it's an hour later for India and South Africa. Also take special, or have a special look at the Scrum 
planning and review meetings or the time slots for them, especially for our India colleagues. They have sprint planning at late in the afternoon and review is at 6.30 during standard time and 7.30 during daylight savings time. Coincidentally, our India colleagues are mostly responsible for doing the demos during reviews, so big kudos to them. The team is located across five countries, the UK, South Africa, Portugal, the Netherlands, and India. Each of these countries have their own set of public holidays and school terms, which needs thoughtful planning, especially around the peak holiday periods. Um, there is benefit in this, as you don't have to, or you don't have the case where the whole team wants to take two weeks leave over Christmas, leaving the solution with skeleton support over this period in South Africa. Seven nationalities means loads of diversity, requiring you to be aware of cultural differences and cultivating respect and appreciation of it on the team. The team speaks nine first languages. At first, our client was skeptical to include non-English speaking people on the team. But after some convincing and sharing our successes in this regard, they decided to brave these uncharted waters and are reaping the benefits today. So let me take you on our project journey, first at a high level and then calling out what didn't work and how we navigated and continue to navigate to deliver the best value to our client. No, we didn't arrive as a millionaire with a white helicopter rescuing a reporter to our apartment dancing to a view of New York for a very rich, I mean, um, uh, happily ever after. <laughs> Instead, our very own Tony previously worked with a client's head of tech and he suggested BBD. This was however after uh, the plug was pulled with a previous company that did some process work for the client. So we started off with one of our accelerators, the BBD Health Check to get to know the, the, the client's business and tech. From this, we identified a few quick wins and estimated that we could save the client 15% of their processing time. They happily agreed, and without writing a single line of code, we managed to save them 20%. At the same time, we suggested a POC that would leverage the power of Vanguard to show the client what BBD can really do for them. They agreed to this, and soon after, project negotiations started, where two milestones were agreed. One, reduce employee processing time by 50%, and two, replace the legacy system. The project kicked off last year around this time, and we have since delivered six features, with the first three features delivering almost 14%, or reducing the processing time by almost 14%, and the last few that has been delivered looking promising. Almost 42% of the legacy system has been replaced. So this is definitely worth celebrating. But let me take you behind the scenes. The diagnostic health check was started in March of 2021 amidst strict COVID rules. So everything had to be done virtually, which is much more challenging than building a relationship in person. And I can definitely also attest to this after my recent visit to the client in London. I think you all know how much Murphy loves a demo. So imagine this. A few days ago, you flew into London. And because of COVID, you are restricted to a single hotel room with your wife and two boys. <laughs> As you can imagine, this was the reason for a few very awkward moments in meetings with this brand new, very important client. But don't worry any, I won't expand on that. You're also only allowed to leave your room for 30 minutes a day and your desk and chair, of course, substandard for an eight plus hour desk job. So demo day arrives. The team is on high alert, check. You have rehearsed your demo five times Check. Your wife is as happy as can be under the circumstances and on high alert with the boys. Check. 
Ground rules reaffirmed with the boys. Check. Virtual background set. Large breath in and out. Smile and click join. The demo was a success. And this was a huge turning point for the client. So from this we know we are all human and sometimes it's better that the people in your virtual meeting room doesn't know what's going on around you. It does however not prevent us from delivering high value while maintaining the right level of professionalism with the client. Why? Because BBD sorts your tech and I know that every single BBD employee is capable of taking on this responsibility. So the project kicked off, and as you can think, some serious requirements and solicitations started. But the response wasn't quite as expected. The client is running a stunning business, and they are really good at what they do, but, oh, well, really good at BAU. They have never done project work. So we had to establish project norms and make sure the project gets the priority it requires. We had to highlight the importance of project structure and flow roles and responsibilities, and project governance. But from our years of experience, we know what is required to make a project, project a success, so we could share that with a client. The project was run as our very favorite methodology, Agile, and the client um, really value their members, so they want to provide them with the best service, so of course, their focus was on providing for a really great user experience. However, a few months into the project, they realized if they maintain their focus on user experience, they will surpass their budget. So we had to put our heads together with a client during a refocus to figure out how the project can stay within budget and achieve their goals, which was um, eliminate a key man risk, uh, provide for process optimization, and replace the legacy system. This was very disruptive to the project and required a few very difficult conversations. So we are doing agile in principle with um, forecasts and estimates that continue to be seen as set in stone. Just imagine if we could hold the weatherman to his forecasts. Never would you need a jacket or an umbrella just for in case. But now we are back on track with features that are prioritized and have planned completion dates. We have a focused and high performing team. And while there have, has been minor slips, the overall project is on track to deliver, um, to stay in scope, uh, to stay in budget and deliver on time. So normally the brain power when a project is started is getting the tech right. But that was the easy part with this project. The hard part was building the trust and continuing to keep it while coaching the client in what we need to be successful. But of course, the, the tech didn't come without its difficulties. But for that, I'll hand over to Henny. <clears throat> Thank you, Alana. My BBD journey started 14 years ago joining a big service sector project and working on the first prototype of Vanguard. A lot of valuable lessons learned on that project. And believe me if I tell you, Max has calmed down a lot in the time I've been working with him. My story has brought me to the UK and coming full circle as I'm leading the, a best in class team on our first, using Vanguard on our first UK based client. Like Ilana said, my personal journey to get here was also a challenge, like I suppose most things in life are. The important thing to me is to realize the day that you truly make, make a meaningful impact that changes something forever at the client. 27 May 2022. That day might seem insignificant to you. And no, it's not because it was the date that ABBA performed in London for the first time in 40 years albeit as digital avatars on themselves, without many knowing and still feeling like a real life performance. It was the day that our first policy went live 
with no human intervention. This was bridging the gap from a manual way of working to a modern workflow driven system. We achieved something great. We made a big difference in this client's life. We have automated a manual process that used to take a user 10 minutes down to a couple of seconds. You might be thinking to yourself, how did they achieve that in just eight months from writing their first line of code? We did it by leveraging the acceleration power of Vanguard. And no, I'm not talking about the car god that only watches vans. Enough about the dad, bad dad jokes. And back to Vanguard. The chances are you might have heard about it. You might have seen a presentation on it. Or even better, you might have worked on a project where it was used. Today I'm going to tell you how Vanguard helped us to bridge the gap at this client. What is Vanguard and what does it do? The answer to that question is relatively simple and one you might have heard before. The harder question is, what does it not do? And how difficult is it to implement at a new client? Knowing me, knowing you, we're hoping for a click once install. And unfortunately, it's not an out of the box solution and it does nothing on its own. The learning curve to understand how to design and implement your first workflow is quite steep. It takes time to onboard any new developer before they can start delivering code. Making core functionality changes is extremely challenging and requires time spent with a core Vanguard developer. Unfortunately, it's not that easy to implement Vanguard without a subject matter expert on your team. Initially, Vanguard did not support an open source database that, and it was primarily geared to run in Docker. Vanguard documentation was adequate for the important components and ATC tells me they are still working on the training material. No one in our team fully understood the ecosystem and how it all fits together. And there is no dedicated team in BBD that supports Vanguard. Instead, it uses a model that is based on crowdsourcing where all teams using Vanguard contribute back to the base code. This adds more pressure on the team for balancing project targets while maintaining the Vanguard base code. And one cannot simply throw the problem over the fence in the hope that someone else would fix it. It took the team a while to understand how it all fits together and having the POC code as reference helped a lot. As with any good POC, there was some intentional technical debt occurred to make it all work seamlessly in the tight deadlines. This left the team with some pitfalls to navigate through. The other disadvantage of the POC was that it was running in a containerized Docker environment. Budget constraints meant we had to retrofit it to run in Azure app services that utilized Azure web apps. The team had to upskill in Azure cloud infrastructure with an extra emphasis on security. The client is obsessed with security. Vanguard security has been vetted by major banks and government organizations alike and has always been given the green light. This client, however, had some concerns that had to be addressed before it was accepted by them. This added more unplanned effort from the team. It also hampered our deployment uh, our ability to deploy um, out-of-the-box CI-CD solutions offered by Azure. These were just some of the teething issues, and it felt at the time that Vanguard was not polished enough for production. At this point, you might be asking yourself, is it even worth implementing Vanguard with all the problems we faced? I think if that statement was true, we will not be standing here today. We are BBD. This is the way. We never let the client down. And we do whatever it takes to make it work. We add value to the client by delivering awesome quality software solutions. So with a small four-man dev team, we started developing in October 2021. 
the first month was largely spent on getting the infrastructure in place. Our recommendation was to use uh, Azure container instances, but this was too costly to the client and we settled on using Azure app services. This is where the paying power of Vanguard took center stage and it proved why it is called an accelerator. We delivered our first feature in, uh, <clears throat> into UAT by the end of December. This is just three months from starting. The feature consisted of two workflows, a member and client portal, which was running in parallel with the, current, the client's current system using the same underlying data. It was released into production at the beginning of February, four months from writing our first line of code. Not many software companies can leverage off more than 38 years of knowledge and experience built into a workable package. Vanguard gives your team the building blocks to deliver complex workflows with multiple integration points in a short space of time. The first building block is the workflow engine. Adapted and approved from the first, first prototype and reused by other clients means we had an extremely robust and durable engine. An accelerator that is tech and business agnostic. Just having a tried and tested workflow engine means we immediately have a minimum level of quality baked into any solution we deliver to the client. The engine is capable of handling small business to enterprise customer workloads with ease. Furthermore, the process of designing workflows aligns technical and business requirements, making sure that everybody is on the same page, while essentially representing the day-to-day -day business operations of the client. Case management forms, forms the second building block. It allows a user or team leads the ability to visualize workloads and claim work items from a work pool via Angular front end. This includes viewing of any attachments and forms a centralized and transparent view of all relevant day-to-day -day operations. Team leads can perform tasks like reassigning work items, approving or declining out of the ordinary cases or routing exceptions to the correct user or team for further investigation. The content store is the third building block. It is a free document store and correspondence service that can work on a range, range of database servers. Documents can be associated to work items for viewing and auditing purposes and correspondence can be sent via multiple channels. It uses templating to generate emails, letters or even text messages with a minimal effort from the developer. It opens, it even encrypts your PDFs attachments before sending them over insecure channel essentially allowing for an extra layer of security. The architecture of Vanguard allowed us to easily split work between developers and breaking dependencies. Now that the foundation is done, we are developing two products in parallel with ease. Vanguard is not fussy about the, <coughs> sorry, not fussy about the services used for the business logic and data layer it allowed the team to integrate into any API, no matter the underlying technology. Where possible, we reused the client's existing Java application. The business logic had to be extracted from the existing 2 t application. The team also reverse engineered the code to write a set of domain-specific REST APIs that was written in Spring Boot alongside JPortal to integrate into the client's current Postgres database. This approach suits the client as their in-house developers were all Java-based. This enabled the team to work alongside the BBD developers to implement the business logic and data layer. We are upskilling their developers to be full stack to give them the capability to take over the system once the project is done. I told you earlier that there is no dedicated team in BBD that supports Vanguard. Instead, we have something better we have a passionate group of people that will go above and beyond to help where they can while still doing their day jobs. From this exceptional group of people, the Postgres port was done and the first open source database was added to Vanguard. Our own team have contributed back into the base code, thus improving it for future 
and existing teams. To date, Vanguard has successfully orchestrated more than 900 policies from application to live with a financial value of 15 million pounds. That's roughly about 300 million rand. We currently have three products live in production and will soon be rolling out four more in the next month. In just over a year, we have <clears throat> enabled this client to automate and modernize seven of their 10 products, saving them 320 man hours per month on, for process optimization. I would call that a resounding success. All of this would not have been possible without using BBD accelerators, especially Vanguard, to our advantage. My brother likes calling developers like me beanbags because he thinks we sit around all day doing nothing, looking at computer screen. It is, in reality, just the opposite. We solve complex problems, collaborating from anywhere in the world while making our clients happy, while perhaps sitting in a beanbag. This story has a happy ending after all the potholes and speed bumps. We made Vanguard a better product for the next team to implement. Every time Vanguard is rolled out to a new team, it becomes better and more versatile and easier to implement. And who knows, one day it might be a click once install. Fabulous. Uh, thanks, Henny. Alana, thank you so much for telling us about the complexities of the project. Um, it um, must have been a, or well, it has been a fabulous year, but a very interesting year as well. Um, and really good to hear about our blended teams and our nationalities. And Henny, really interesting to see the use of accelerators actually in real life. Um, so how can we help our clients and our project teams going forward? What else could we potentially reimagine? And Tony was talking about this earlier. How can we make improvements on technology, business processes, and customer experiences? And how can we meet the changing business and market dynamics? The answer is through digital transformation. A classic example of digital transformation, and more specifically domain transformation, is Amazon. So, Amazon started selling music and videos in 98 and then began selling books online. And now it's a multinational tech company that focuses on e-commerce, cloud computing, digital streaming, and AI. So what Amazon did was they took an existing internal capability, their large, very advanced data centers, and they turned them into an opportunity that created a whole new market for them all from developing a solution to help them improve their online sales. So new technologies are constantly redefining our products and services. And actually industry boundaries are becoming blurred um, and that creates entirely new sets of opportunities. So looking back, we have seen from Alana and Henny that this multifaceted project that encountered many challenges, both from a tech point of view and a people point of view, we've seen how we're able to leverage the experience and knowledge of our community, despite having, again, that highly skilled and experienced team on the ground. So it sounds like something we should be shouting about, right? Well, actually, we, were, we already are. You will have all seen, I'm sure, our excellent marketing materials, and you will be familiar with our BBD at a glance slide. And having heard our story today, you can probably see how these core elements that we are proud of, these are the same elements that we have tapped into on this project. Even further, we have also used all the relevant tools at our disposal. So just to show you, I'm highlighting here the accelerators that we on this project were actually able to make use of. So faced with issues, you've somewhere to go to help you find the solutions. So what other potential accelerators are out there? What tools do you use on projects that could be useful to your colleagues? What's the next big thing? After all, Vanguard started out as an internally developed project uh, tool, and now we use it to solve business problems 
and actually realize cost savings on many client projects. What is that tool that you've reimagined or developed to help you accomplish a task on your project? Have you given a day-to-day -day task a digital upgrade? Have you got an idea for a tool that could be a potential product or service that we could then resell to clients? If you do have an idea, speak to somebody and get involved. Chances are it could benefit more than just you and your project. There can be real opportunity for these new technologies to have the potential to unlock new business on an international level. And it's this type of transformation that offers the greatest opportunities to create new value. As you've listened to our story today, we hope we have inspired you to make full use of our internal knowledge capital and to start to imagine what our next big accelerator could look like. Our story is one of an excellent journey, actually supported by the entire BBD community. So we want to thank each of you for helping us bridge that gap. Thanks for listening. Questions? In the room? In the room. I think this side that I can see. <laughs> Yeah. I have a question. Hi, Hi Chris. I'm, I'm struggling as a baby boomer, not even any of the generations of the boomers, uh, to uh, get my head around quite what you did. So, could you say a little bit more about the kind of absence that you're in there and how, they, how you keep the technology up to date if new assets come in and all things sure. change? Let, let me just um, tell everyone what that question was in case they didn't hear. Um, what is in Vanguard is the question, and how do we manage to keep that up to date and relevant in a current dynamic markets that we're surrounded by? Um, so Vanguard started off as a C sharp front end, uh, a very fat client with the workflow engine content store and case management basically driving it. And at the time, it was the right technology because that was in 2009, right, when we started using it. Uh, today, we've actually modernized the front end, and it's actually a front, Angular front end. So it runs on, on any web-based uh, application. So that's modernizing the, 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 um, the front end because that's what clients like. It was used at that big service sector client, and when COVID hit, they couldn't ship that massive fronting to all the people at home. So they had to reinvent and reimagine it by giving them in a browser application. Mm -hmm. So that's how we've been modernizing it. Even today, there's talks about changing the Angular stuff even to something new at the moment. Uh, the workflow engine, we're actually looking at rewriting in .NET Core maybe. It's currently in C++. So that's from the original base, but we are there's a program at the moment to re, re, redo it in, in .NET Core so it can run on multiple platforms and, and in the newer technology. So we are constantly upgrading and improving um, the technology underlying inside Vanguard. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. No? Uh Any online lots? Okay, cool. That's, That's it. it then. Thanks, everybody. I think we're going to break. <laughs>